Warm welcome to the Vienna Institute for International Economic Studies uh, panel on the occasion of uh, the Greek elections. Our distinguished panelists are here to my right, uh, Kurt Bayer. He is a senior research associate of the Institute and a financial markets expert. Uh, to my left, uh, Michael Landesmann, he is our scientific director. And to the far left, uh, Vladimir Gligorov, uh, he is our Balkans expert. Uh, we will have short presentations of about 15 minutes of each panelist, and then we will open up for discussion. Okay, thanks a lot uh, for the invitation. What I'm going to do is uh, run quickly through the Syriza program as uh, they decided on it in Saroniki uh, last September. And then I just mention a few questions. I will not really answer them or try to answer them. We can leave that to the discussion because I think it would also leave some space for the other um, panelists here. Uh, the objectives are, and of course this has all been now in the media quite, uh, quite extensively, European Debt Cancellation Conference for Debt Restructuring to a Sustainable Level. Nobody really knows what that means in detail, but this is one of the uh, voiced uh, kind of objectives of, of the party. Uh, they also want uh, an, a kind of a clause that, that the debt service uh, repayments have to be kind of um, uh, geared towards the growth rate. So debt cancellation should not uh, become unsustainable as to some extent it has been up to uh, now. They also want a golden rule for the stability and growth pact. They say, okay, we need some kind of growth investments and they should not count towards the, the budget consolidation, which they essentially accept as a, as a target of EU policy. Uh, they are very much in favor of uh, a European growth strategy. They call it European New Deal, uh, which uh, should be engineered to some extent by the European Investment Bank. And uh, they have uh, so far welcomed uh, uh, Mr. Juncker's um, FC kind of program, but they say this is not enough. But uh, still, this, they think this goes in the right direction because it gives a little bit of a change in EU economic policy towards more growth enhancing uh, measures. Uh, they, and this is before, of course, they, they welcomed and still now welcome the quantitative easing thing, which the European Central Bank has been. Uh, starting, uh, uh, will start actually just uh, a few weeks from now. Uh, they request that, of course, Greece, uh, contrary to some of the announcements of, of ECB functionaries, should be included in this uh, ECB quantitative easing um, uh, sovereign uh, debt uh, program from the start and not only later on. And then they refer to kind of uh, the German uh, damages which have been done to Greece uh, where, which essentially is a sideline if you want, but uh, there has been a Greek uh, study uh, on how much uh, damage Germany has done and how much and how little of that during the Second World War uh, Greece has received. So that essentially is the large line. Uh, they have four pillars, and I think this is very important that they say we are in a, a substantial humanitarian crisis which really needs to be resolved. This is not just some kind of an idea, ideological or Keynesian versus neoliberal type of economic program discussion. We really are in such dire state. Uh, so many people in Greece uh, are in really very bad shape. Uh, uh, only 40% I think have uh, health insurance anymore. Uh, many people have been losing their homes. Uh, there's soup kitchens and so on, and uh, it's, it's really a, a situation which really needs to be solved very soon. Of course, they want to stimulate the economy and tax justice. I think this tax collection type of revenue collection is an important part. Uh, I think everybody in Europe at least thinks that nobody, hardly anybody in Greece pays taxes. It seems that it is a very regressive type of thing. Some of the people in lower incomes, of course, do pay taxes because of course they pay at least uh, the value added tax and also some income taxes, but uh, the richer uh, people don't seem to pay income tax and they say essentially, Syriza says, we have to remedy this, there's about two billion which you could uh, uh, gain annually. Uh, towards full employment, uh, you know, that the, the unemployment rate, the measured unemployment rate is about 26%, youth unemployment rate twice that. Uh, so that clearly is part of the humanitarian crisis. People can't afford uh, to feed themselves anymore. And of course, they say, uh, we recognize that the political system 
uh, has been dysfunctional. We have to really uh, start to create a functioning system. We have to get away from clientelism. We have to get away from um, an oligarchic system uh, where essentially there's a very strong connection between political power and economic power. One feeds the other, and that is not uh, uh, really to the benefit of the Greek uh, population. Now, I'll just go very quickly to some of the estimates which they have in this program. Uh, and uh, they say, okay, so many people have lost their electricity access, so they want free electricity for these 300,000 poorest households. Uh, they want food aid for these households. Uh, they want to have housing subsidies for 30,000 households that have lost their flats. Uh, they uh, say the pension, uh, pensions are so low and so many people cannot really feed themselves. Uh, so there's 1.3 million people who should uh, receive uh, higher supplements to their pension. Uh, again, uh, medical care and pharmaceutical access has uh, really deteriorated very strongly, and you need to restore medical uh, help and pharmaceutical uh, help uh, for the people, for the poorest people. Uh, free transport for the unemployed and poor so they can get to work or can get somewhere else. Uh, and uh, there has been also a soil church and consumption tax on heating oil and diesel, which they kind of want to eliminate. Supposedly, this will cost about 1.9 uh, billion uh, euros. Uh, again, uh, in the second part, economy and taxes, uh, large tax debts should be collected, uh, relief for small ones. This would bring in about 2 billion uh, euros. Uh, there's a very, very um, uh, unpopular tax, general property tax, which the recent government, the previous government, has introduced. Uh, they want to get rid of that because so many people are not able to pay that, and Greece has, I think, an 80% uh, owner-occupied uh, type of thing. Very few people rent, many people own houses. For many people, uh, owning a second uh, house is their savings uh, type of thing from which they pay uh, their pensions or supplement their pensions and so on. So they want to do something uh, to get rid of this general property tax, but also have a tax, an increase in the tax for the large and very expensive homes. <clears throat> they want to have a highly progressive income tax uh, with a large tax threshold of about uh, 12,000 euros. Uh, they want to give some kind of partial debt relief for poor debtors. Uh, they're interested in increasing the minimum wage, which doesn't cost the government anything because this is something the economy supposedly doesn't cost the government anything directly because this will be uh, the businesses which have to pay for that. And they want to create an, a Greek uh, development bank with, and endow it with about 1 billion of euros to start essentially a growth program, an investment program uh, in, uh, in Greece and, and repair some of the infrastructure. So total revenues of that would be three billion, it costs about six and a half billion. The third pillar is the employment, 30,000 additional jobs. Uh, this is just a short term type of thing. In the medium term, they want to go towards uh, full employment. Uh, they want to rescind uh, some of the uh, uh, labor uh, protection, where they want to rescind some of the eliminations of the labor protection laws, which the recent government has been uh, enacting, partly as a result of the, of the Troika uh, demands. Uh, they want to reintroduce, again, uh, collective wage negotiations. Uh, the, the, the power of the unions has been uh, uh, reduced quite a bit during the last couple of years. And of course, they have something which they call unfair labor laws, which they really want to look at because they say uh, it hasn't created any more jobs. It has led, led to this uh, very high unemployment, and people are really uh, suffering from that. So that would cost about <laughs> three billion, supposedly. Um, the, the more political and democracy types of things are listed here, transparency, economic independence, effectiveness of con communes and regions. It's kind of a devolution of economic and political power into the communes and the regions away from a very centralized political system which exists now. Uh, then they want uh, more uh, direct involvement of citizens in uh, the political system, participation uh, in all kinds of decision-making processes. Uh, they want to strengthen the parliamentary right, but also now uh, uh, parliamentarians uh, are immune from criminal uh, prosecution. They want to lift that partially 
uh, to a European kind of standards. And there's, of course, a lot of things with media, um, all kinds of issues uh, which, which uh, they say we have to also, again, reestablish some kind of a government control or public control over the media because uh, the private media have been playing into the hands uh, of the Troika, which is, uh, I think, uh, not extremely popular, but also has kind of led to some of the deterioration uh, in the whole uh, system uh, in Greece in the last few years. Now, don't ask me exactly how these things add up, because when you add up all the things that I listed, you don't really come to this total cost of 11.4 billion and total revenues of 12 billion. But this is the, uh, and the fund probably goes into more detail, this is essentially their kind of take that all the programs which they have for the short to medium term run are not really uh, costing net anymore. They stay essentially on the budget consolidation path. But they have to also realize, of course, that Greece in the last uh, seven years, I think, has reduced its uh, government budget deficit uh, from uh, more than 12% of GDP to 1% of GDP, so an extremely strong re uh, contractionary type of effect. Now, my questions would be, but I won't answer them, how are really the revenues, uh, how realistic are the revenue estimates? I mean, we even know from countries like Austria that very often uh, the political system proposes and promises revenues for some kind of measures which somehow uh, in the medium run don't really turn up. There has been a lot of capital flight already. How are they going to deal with that? Because obviously this is a program which is trying to redistribute at least political power and also economic power. So some of the people with a lot of money have already left the country in the last few days. About 4 billion uh, euros have left uh, the country. Uh, will the country be able to attract foreign direct investment? Uh, this depends very much on what the mood in the European Union is going to be about this whole thing, how this now, this hysteria which has been played, I think, before the election, how that will calm down and, and how, how the, the first negotiations uh, between the party or the government and uh, the European Union um, uh, uh, will, will proceed. Uh, how will it be possible in Greece uh, to generate investment? It's not just a matter of how much money do they have available, but in which areas should they go? The Greek economy is an extremely narrow production base based on very few sectors. Uh, Greece has only a, a, an export ratio of about 30% of GDP, which is very low by, uh, for a country that size. Austria has about twice as much. Uh, so they don't have very much exportable products. Uh, in order to have a medium-term program, they need to broaden uh, the production and services uh, portfolio, which they have now. Uh, there's the old uh, issue about how much do they really have to spend on uh, defense. Uh, Greece spends about 4% of GDP on defense uh, and uh, hardly anything on research and development. Some people say this is a trade-off. Some of that should go over, but one also has to realize, of course, that Greece is the southeastern pillar of the European NATO type of thing, and uh, a lot of the discussion about letting Greece into the European, uh, into the Eurozone was also politically motivated because they, it was always said we can't leave one of the important NATO members outside uh, of the Eurozone. Uh, there's, of course, power questions. Uh, the people who have power now, economic power, political power, even though they have lost the election, will not easily yield to the new government, but it depends very much on how um, pragmatic, if you want, the new government is going to be. And, of course, what will be the reaction of EU countries and the European Commission? Now, some of the effects on the EU, and this is my last slide, is uh, what will happen really with the Stability and Growth Pact. Uh, a lot of people, I think, and what you read now today in the media from a lot of, uh, let's say, more critical or progressive people say, this might actually be uh, the first call to uh, get away from austerity all over Europe, this pretty uh, one uh, single-minded budget consolidation as the major um, economic policy by the European Union might get a dent from this and maybe there will be a more growth-friendly agenda. 
the ECB, uh, of course, uh, is a major player here because it holds a lot of the Greek uh, government debt. And of course, uh, Benoit Curé, uh, the French um, uh, ECB director, has already said the ECB cannot uh, uh, accept a, a cancellation of, uh, of Greek debt because that is just legally impossible. Oh. Of its own, of yes. To ECB, but not yes. Generally. Yeah, 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 yeah. Of 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 the Greek that uh, owed to the ECB. They have voluntarily accepted. That's an important difference. Okay, okay. So it, could, it could accept it if it's forced to, but it's uh, not a Okay. Yeah, at least there is an opinion. People think. That it's I think that's that's anyway. I think something we can discuss later and how that how that might work. Uh, the Greeks say it's not just a, a matter of Greece, it's not just a matter that concerns only us. We want a debt conference for all the EU countries uh, to look at uh, also not only the program countries but all other countries. Is the debt which they have uh, sustainable? Of course, Greece has 178% of GDP in debt and uh, now I think has a, has a uh, interest rate of 8.5%. So anybody who can calculate knows that uh, if that were called right away, uh, Greek, Greece uh, could not uh, do that. So other countries are in a slightly better shape, but still it's, a, it's an important issue, I think, to say let's widen the discussion to really EU policy and let's look at all the countries. Again, reorientation from austerity to investment and growth. I mean, uh, Juncker with his uh, supposedly 30 billion program uh, has already started something. A lot of people say this is not enough. We don't know how much of that really will become available. When will it become available? How can it go? Uh, the construction of that uh, program is, is extremely tricky and uh, might not, uh, might not uh, take off very easily. Uh, some people are afraid, of course, that uh, if, you, if Greece is granted any kind of concession, then there might be contagion to other program countries, Portugal, Spain, uh, Cyprus, uh, probably, God knows, Italy, France might also then want concessions. And of course, this is kind of the, the, the finger in the dam kind of uh, uh, type of theory. The, the, there's this Dutch uh, uh, little story, a boy kind of uh, sees that out of one of the dams, a little trickle comes and he goes there and puts his finger in and he has his finger in because he knows if he doesn't stop the little trickle now, all of Holland might uh, disappear and a lot of people I think are always afraid that the dam, if you give any kind of concessions to anybody, the whole dam will break and chaos breaks loose and the whole world will come to an end, well, which eventually it will. This is my own prediction, but not so soon. <laughs> and of course there, there might be effects on non-program countries because some of them are, are donor countries, of course some of them are also not in such good shape. And so this might really be, and some people say, the Greek election might be a game changer, the start of a game changer for all of Europe. So I'll stop here and pass it on to Vladimir. And